Uh, welcome everyone. I uh, uh, hope the morning went well. Uh, I know I'm on the toughest spot just after lunch. Everyone had something to eat. It's the, it's the afternoon. I might be tired, but I'm going to be a little bit more engaging at this, but really what I want to talk to you is about uh, really seed treating principles and methods, uh, whether it's the actual physical treating of the seed, um, you know, with some record keeping. I'm actually going to go through some examples of different types of machinery out there, some that you may use, some that you may have seen in the past. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Shad Milligan. Uh, I'm with Syngenta. I am the uh, seed care technical lead for Western Canada, um, based out of Lethbridge. Uh, so how is that? Can people hear me now? How's, how do I sound, Jamie? Um, yeah, I think you're a little quiet, but um, I can still hear you and I can turn up my sound a little bit. So I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll, Let me talk I'll, louder. I'll, I'll talk louder. I'm doing the best job. With, okay. Anyway, so with that, my, what really what we're going to look through today is the uh, trading principles. We're going to go through some calibration examples. We're going to talk about record keeping. Um, I've got an example of a G3 use operation. Uh, and then talk a little bit more about just some more calculation examples in general for treating seed. So part of the training today or knowledge transfer really is to introduce you some who haven't been or seen commercial treating, talk a little bit about it. Um, you know, I want to educate you as either a grower or a retail partner or industry just on education for confidence. Um, because seed treating can be that way. It can be a, a very fulfilling experience when it comes down to it. There, there is a very large art and science to it. So what is commercial treating? Well, commercial treating provides custom application of seed care products to a customer. So at the end of the day, this is you as a business providing a, a goods and services to something else. Why commercially treat seed? So before we go on that, I would say that, you know, seed treatments and in my view, I've, I've been around roughly doing this for about 15 years. So I've come a long ways uh, from where we're at. And the need for the, I would say, professionals in this industry who do the training like this and other things to keep their seed applicator's license in check uh, is a good thing. It's a standard thing. I think you, you offer a very valuable experience to the farmer because the seed treatments are, you're putting seed treatment on such a small dosage rate on high volumes now that the product as well needs to putting too much on is, is wasting your money putting too little on you're not getting the full benefit fed of that seed treatment so whether for disease protection or insect insect protection it really is critical to put this on properly and really gone are the days where you're glugging it on and and redder less red that just doesn't make sense in the world today so really it's about you know providing that professional quality service to a producer uh and and again it, as you can say it's it's about the proper rate as about the proper c to c coverage and that's what i really want to talk to you today about that as well i think another big thing is there's always that concern of leftover seed treatment uh or seed you you don't that for the producer side of this who are attending this today there there is no leftover seed for you, you can make better decisions as you uh, um, um, you know, when it comes to making those decisions on seed, uh, going that route, you don't have that seed left over to deal with. Uh, it, it can, you know, there, there's an image that it is messy, hard, and, and I think nowadays it's come a long ways with the machinery, with packaging, uh, everything's a lot of it. A lot of regulation as well has come into place where you're, you're, you, you can't have that open system. So really the seed treating part of it is, is it's not a messy thing if you have the right tools and if you sit, set yourself up with the right equipment. So the principle of treating, it doesn't matter what type of equipment you have, it, it, it is going to be the same for just about everything. And the, ultimately we have a goal here. We wanna, we wanna make sure that that seed is properly treated at the right rate and a, the bigger part of this is the uniformity and have that seed to seed coverage uh, be uniformity throughout the entire 
uh, batch that we're doing here. And some of the keys to success are, you know, having that consistent grain flow. That plays a big part in how that product is going to be metered on. But likewise, the seed treatment, which is a, a lot more adjustable than your grain flow, allows you to set yourself up for success. The biggest thing was, is really that primary application. And when I talk about primary application, it's the initial contact of seed treatment to the actual seed itself. Alternatively, the second biggest thing on this is the secondary application. That initially is whether you're using something uh, like a grain system that needs an auger, if you've got a, a US seed or a drum type machine, uh, those are the secondary applications that also need to be, or the mixing of the seed to, in, to ensure that uniform coverage of that seed and seed treatment contact. And it's like anything, the more you understand and know how your equipment works, the better off that equipment works for you. And a small thing that I always look at is just the winterization or cleaning your machinery before after you're done and putting it away when you bring that out in the spring or if you're continually using it, you know, just it's a small upkeep of, of making sure of taking, you know, some time to clean it out, uh, have a look through that equipment to make sure you don't have any blockages or things like that. Overall, it's just the understanding of your equipment as well. So we're kind of, you can kind of see the flow chart here. And there's really, you've got the two different routes when it comes to the application principles, whether it's the seed or the chemical. You've got your primary application, secondary application. I'm gonna walk through a few of these. And you can kind of see how seed flow is directly related to the chemical flow or the metering side of things. And then primary application as well along with the secondary application. These are really the four main pillars of the principle of application with seed treatments. So seed flow, we're gonna to talk to seed flow right now. So there's different types of seed flow systems and I'm actually using some archaic types here and I'll move forward into some newer systems, but it just gives you a taste of what's, what was out there. It's still out there a little bit, but what is new so volumetric is based on the seed is equal to the actual weight. So whether that's a metering wheel, uh, an orifice or a slide gate, or an actual metering conveyor, they're actually metering out the weight or the seed volume uh, for the flow of that system. If you look by weight, uh, a batch type system, and usually batch type systems you'll find mostly uh, in canola treating, uh, uh, commercial operations. Uh, it's all based on the weight side of things. Some older machinery uh, found out there that was used to was a tip wear, so you'd have actual weight and then it would tip and dump it over and treat it on that. And then some continuous examples would be uh, a weigh belt. So that weigh belt is continuously putting X amount back into. You'll see that with some of the new, newer machinery that is made by KSI and USC, as well as you've got the batch wear or the, again, this comes back to now the mass of the seeds equal that weight. So another pillar of the application principles is really the chemical flow or medium of that product. So some of the chemical flow metering systems out there, um, you've got pressurized nozzles, you've got metering spoons, metering wheel, and perispog pumps. As well, uh, you have the metering wheel there is just an example. And that would be kind of an example of, you know, easy technology, but very sensitive viscosity. And the viscosity of products have come a long way since we've gone away from solvent-based products into water-based products. So now you've got the capability. So this is very sens sensitive to viscosity. Uh, it also is very sensitive to capacity. So again, you can't do a uh, lot. The speed is, is limited in what you can treat with this system. The, you know, relatively low cost 
to run. Uh, it's reliable, but it does have that limited accuracy when it comes to switching between products that have different viscosities. Uh, and from what I've been told with these systems, uh, I personally have not run one of these, but they are difficult to calibrate. And I think there are still one or two that I'm aware of uh, that are still treating within the confines of Alberta specifically. So a peristalt pump, uh, this is really when you start to look at something uh, like the, the storm system, uh, USC, KSI, these newer type technologies that have the consistent flow from a, from a seed perspective, the chemical systems, these are the systems they're using because it's a very accurate way of sending the product to the actual treater. It's easy to maintain, very easy to calibrate. It has minor maintenance. The biggest thing about these is that the actual physical cords that go through the peristalt pumps, uh, um, they need to be replaced on a regular basis. So that would be an incurred cost to that, but it's one of those things that it really makes a difference on how that product is delivered into the seed treater. Very sensitive viscosity, so you can you can actually uh, use this for better performance when it comes to different types of products out there. And as well, it tolerates the solids of there and air. And what that means is at the end of the day, it is really blocking up that air and solids out there, allowing that product to move through that pump. And typically what we've seen on most things and uh, the, the grain system would be this type of example uh, or in the past what I've seen is where you put nozzles into an auger, these type of systems where it's using the pressure to push out the product. So again, really easy, really easy to use. There's a very low cost and maintenance to it. It can be easy to calibrate, but again, uh, the downfall of this is still a sensitive viscosity as well. So primary application. So primary application really is the initial contact of seed to chemical contact. The quality of the application really is determined on the behavior of that seed treatment. So you know, the cost of the product, adhesion, you know, in this to primary application, temperature of the seed, uh, outside, air, outside air temperature, temperature of the product itself, all these different variables play or have an impact on the treatment itself. Whether that's in a fine mist or large drops has a dramatic effect also on the primary application to that seed. So if you look at the low cost equipment, we've talked a little bit about uh, metering spoons, uh, metering wheel, they tip end on larger drops. So what we have with that is that initially you have poor contact, a lot of that product's gonna only gonna hit a few of the seeds. So what you need to be in order to successful on the second part is have that strong secondary application. So really it's a mixing of that seed uh, through an auger, through a drum. Those are the things you need. So where you have the poor contact, you need to make up for it on the other application pillar on this. So if you look at uh, some of the basic side of this is that, you know, you get that kind of straight pouring of product onto the seeds. So Again, it may be in a batch type system where this is happening or continuous flow devices on um, auger treaters. So, you know, what you have here is that you've got some increased volumes, but again, you really need that intensive secondary mixing. So if you kind of look at the picture here and see that example is that you do have a pressurized pump pulling the product and pushing it into the auger. And what you're getting is that you're not gonna get a lot of those seeds initially hit with the seed treatment. So what you need is that auger, uh, and the longer the auger, the more mixing you get, the better off you're gonna be to really create that intensive secondary mixing to be successful in treating those seeds. So when you start to look at what, we, what I would say more sophisticated equipment uh, 
in the world of seed treatment. They're really taking, um, they have good primary application to the seed. So that seed to chemical contact, you're getting a lot of treatment onto a lot of the seeds. And this is, this is creating that, whether it's into a fine missile, uh, some of the machines from USC and KSI use atomi atomizing heads. And so what an atomizing head does is that you have products dropping into uh, basically a head with a bunch of holes onto it, uh, rotating at a large number of RPMs, and it's breaking a droplet of seed treatment into a very fine mist. You have a curtain of, of seed going over. So a lot of those seeds are getting a little bit of seed treatment. So your secondary application doesn't have to be intensive. So again, kind of what I've just mentioned there, um, the grain seed treater is principles uh, similar in treats that fine mist, but this is really a what you'd see in some of these these USC machines, KSI machines, uh, is that you've got the really atomization of the treatment or making that seed treatment into a fine mist. It's getting a lot of the seeds. It really becomes easy to distribute to the uniformity afterwards and gentler on the secondary treatment. So a lot of these machinery you see are usually associated with treating pulses. Uh, they've moved into treating cereals, but a lot of the, for the most part, what we've seen is that whether it's soybeans or peas or lentils, a lot of these were these are these machines moved in, but they also have very, very good job on the cereal side because they've actually been able to create higher volumes uh, on this. This is, uh, been one of the benefits now is that these machines have increased capabilities for volumes. So shifting into the pillar of secondary application or redistribution of the seed treatment to the seed, we really look at this as this is where you create your uniformity or you know you're you're distributing the rest of that seed treatment onto all the seeds. So you can either have what we would say gentle through a drum or uh, rough through an auger. So typically uh, we've seen, you know, the cereals be used with that auger type. They're a little more resilient due to the nature of the seed uh, versus pulses being on that. But we've also seen some advancements in equipments where they putting different types of sliding in uh, so that it's not as rough on that pulse side of, of the seed. So this is just kind of an example of a, you know, this is a, your generic drum, what your, what your drum type treated would look like. You have your initial product going at the top here, feeding from whether that's a truck or a bin. You have the treatment actually going on here in the middle. And then your second, so there's your primary application here. There's secondary applications to the drum. And this is the belt auger. So really, this is just a transfer. You're not getting any benefit from the seeds being uh, redistributed there or mixed again. It's just gentler for the seed itself. So that's an example of the drum type treaters that are out there. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you on the on the call today have seen flooding from an auger. Uh, again, this is just what this does, but you can kind of see as that seed goes up the auger it redistributes the seed treatment throughout that, through that corkscrew method. And what we see on this as well is the longer this process on the secondary application, the better distribution of seed treatment you'll see at the end of your job. So if we look at continuous flow treaters, uh, the primary and the secondary application occur in separate areas of the treatment themselves but the seed and chemical are all metered simultaneously. All products are applied at the same time, and this allowed for larger capacity of movement of, of, of grain or of seed itself. And it allows for uh, really uh, a range of low to mid li uh, liquid rates and has a little bit of limited flexibility when it comes to timing. So I talked about another example. So this is an, another example of another type of continuous flow system. 
uh, a lot of stationary sites have come up, but again, this is a mobile site itself. So again, your, your chemicals being metered to here, you have your consistent brain flow coming into here and you're into here. Everything's taking place at here. You've got your mixing here and distribution back into the truck. So the biggest lag in this time would be the size of your drum and the amount of volume on that. So when we talked about limit the limitations on this, it comes back to what I said about the auger. The drum's no different. If you have a smaller drum, you can't put as much volume through uh, and it, depending on the speed you're going. So that is a limiting factor when it comes to some of these machines is the size of drums you can you can get. So a lot of the time we won't see these batch treaters. Uh, they're really set into uh, whether it's the sugar beet business, whether it's the canola business, you'll find these type of treaters in large commercial facilities. And again, the primary application and secondary application occur in the same area of the treater. Uh, the seed is, is weighed, so you know that you're be, depending on the size of that treater, it could be 25 kg, could be a 50 kg, could be 250 kg. But that seed is dumped into that batch. That is the batch you'll be treating in that specific uh, time frame. You have the chemical that is metered into the seeds. You can add other products in the sequence. The batch treaters really are the most flexible treater to try and do different things and add different additives. Uh, there's a big reasons why things like sugar beets and canola, they use these uh, because it, again, this allows for higher liquid rates to be alive. But again, one of these drawbacks too is just you have lower volumes per hour. So this is a, a typical example of your batch treater. You've got your your seed that's weighed in uh, as as the drum spins, and then you've got an atomizing head of hair as well. As well, you've got different. You can have different lines, many different lines, putting into that atomizing head to allow that nature of the product. And a lot of the time, uh, they probably have different timings for different products going on here. But this would run into depending on the cycle. It could be a two minute cycle. It could be minute 30 cycle but that's where the limitation is on time you know you're only that time has to be a certain speed for that treatment to be there so you know how much time you're gonna have with each batch you know how much so that would be one of the, the more downfalls in this but again a lot of the time you wouldn't as a whether you're a commercial treater in the sense of pulses and cereals you wouldn't be using this machine because it's it's really it's it, this is this takes up quite a bit of time. This is more found in larger scale commercial operations where smaller seeds are being treated. So some of the basic principal functions when it comes to seed treating is that when you meter those seeds, you want to maintain that consistent seed flow. That's that's one of the key things. Uh, the second thing would you know having that seed treatment being accurate and adjustable. And again, different types of systems have different benefits and drawbacks when it comes to on the accuracy of each side. You know, when you look at primary application, more advanced seed treaters have evolved into making their seed treatment to a fine, fine mist, so they have less intrusive and secondary mixing. And fourthly, whether whether the secondary application is the auger or the drum, that is just as important as your primary application. So I'm just going to walk through an example here of just, this is a, a USC treater. So one of their older models, but it's the principle I just want to uh, showcase here today. So if you look at the seed treater, uh, you can see here, this is where the seed dumped into. Uh, really, for these type of, of situations, you want this full before you start seed treating and having that continuous flow. 
um, because when you look at the meter, liquid metering system through here, again, it's usually with the pulse uh, pump, it's falling into this area here. So having that curtain of grain consistent is key to starting this for uniform application. So you see kind of falls to this, your gate here, um, and it will give you flowing through here, and this is allowed your adjustable flow here to what you're looking for. And it really makes that curtain of grain fall over that atomizing head, making that fine mist and rotating at that high speed to get there. And then when you get into that secondary application, you have your drum there. So that now your seed that has the seed treatment on it falls into that drum and it's that final mixing. So that drum turns at a certain revolution per minute, you can dictate what you can do on that, and then flowing into a chute or a conveyor that it takes it takes it out. Uh, a lot of the time, what I've seen on some of these machines, it makes a world of difference by tilting that uh, tilting at the right angle. So even getting your angle of discharge of the drum right makes a big difference on your vol on your volume of seed that you can discharge. So when you look inside. Uh, kind of this, the, the, the machine here, you've got, again, you've got your product flow over here or the distribution cone. You've got your injection tube for your product. You've got your rotary, rotary atomizer, and then you've got your motor attached to it. But this is kind of the basic principle, what I said, and, and that's uniformly, this is kind of the curtain of grain, the fine mist, uh, this is what this, this machine is doing. And then you've got your rotary, rotary drum as well on that. So when the seeds and seed treatment are combined inside here, this is kind of an example of good primary application. So you can see here with the soybeans that you've got a, a lot, you've got product on a lot of the seeds. Uh, that's, that's a good thing. You know, if you were to take this out and, you know, either ask someone to buy this from you or plant it, you're not gonna, number one, people are gonna say that, well, that doesn't look very good to me, it's blotchy. Uh, number two, you're not gonna get the full effect of the seed treatment because coverage really is everything when it comes to the properly treated pro product. And so again, when it goes through the drum and it's about that secondary application, and this is an example of really, really good secondary application. So the other type of system out there that I would say is, 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 is comparable to USC KSI is now with, with the storm treating systems, whether it's some of the older models F or the FX series, but now the, uh, the Opti Pro that they have as well, is that you've got your continuous grain. So you're able to really maintain and, and pick what flow of seed you want here and then match that up to the chemical flow here, and then have your secondary and final product come out the end here. So it's really quite a novel idea now uh, for this type of system. It's, uh, it's just a different system in the marketplace as well, but uh, we have options in this space to use as well. And again, this is just, again, an example of, you can kind of see the, what what good treating is at the end of the day here with um, the cereal seed. So calibration of equipment. I want to talk about record keeping because uh, just as treating the seed is important, I feel that record keeping is just as important uh, for making sure that you have the proper um, records if the event of something arises. So, really, about the record keeping is, is your customer name and address, and this is this is going to be quite redundant, uh, but really having the date on there, the products and rate used, you know, 
the variety treated wasn't certified, uh, record amount of C treated, recorded amount of treatment used, uh, you know, untreated, treated samples of the seed, any type of extra notes, sample of the untreated, and finished job treatment side of things. So, So if you look at um, gonna stop presenting here for a sec. Bear with me. Okay, sorry about that. So, balance sheets. When we uh, okay, there's where I wanted to get to. So, so when we look at um, something that may not come into mind, but it's very important when it comes to what you kind of need to leave the yard with, is that you know MSDS sheets labels and C tags um, and what what they are is really it's a home to important information so it really talks about the, the product specifications when it comes to the actual breakdown of the composition the physical attributes of that, that product as well as that label really tells you everything about that product uh, you know some of the restrictions on it, the do's and don'ts rates you know insects control diseases uh, as well as the MSDH sheets uh, give you that safety information. So that's important if you have any type of spill or accident with that. Uh, you, you can make sure that you're contacting the right people uh, in order that happens. And again, the label has that rate uh, and diseases covered on that. The seed tag too is, is something you need to be sending out if you're commercially treating seed as well. It tells simple product information and has the warnings. And it really provides to that customer uh, what was applied to that particular seed as well. So just kind of an example of, I'm going to use the G3, um, the type of equipment in the operation of it is that you've got a transfer auger, so that really regulates your seed flow. You've got your, your mix tank and your actual pump. You have your pressure and flow controls for cheat treatment, and then you've got the actual applicator itself and your mixing auger. So again, this is kind of an example just to take you through, you know, your primary application, your secondary application, and the different components that are involved in this. So when you look at the set of equipment, uh, every year uh, it's good to get in the habit, number one at the end of the year, is clean it out, winterize it, and that just allows you, so when you come to this step, is when you expect it, you're look for loose fettings and, or cracks or leaks like that. And an easy way to do that is run water. One, don't, don't run chemical before it. You have the chance to put water through it. Uh, do a water check before you go through it. So your transfer auger, which now is going to regulate your, your seed movement, uh, it's an electric auger. So it has a consistent flow rate. And then with that, you have a gate on that, which is going to regulate the actual seed flow from the bin. You have your mixed tank and pump. So this allows you to 
to set the rate of the seed treatment through a pressurized pump onto that nozzle into the actual applicator of the G3. And if you just look, you're able to have your pump suck from that tote or suck from that mixing tote to get that product out and in there. And this is really just your typical setup when you're working with the G3. This, this would be more of an on-farm type setup versus what a commercial trigger would have, or maybe some commercial triggers are set up like this. But again, you can see your grain flow, you've got your consistent, consistent movement of grain. You have your primary application in the actual cone of the G3. And in this cone itself, you have that cur the grain falling over. You have a pressurized nozzle, which is delivering a fine mist to the seed itself. So you're getting that good initial primary application. And then you have your auger, which gives you that good secondary application when it comes to the mixing, mixing side of things. And if you look at some of the valve positions um, on the G3, these are kind of the different settings. If you're gonna fill with products, you want this bottom piece open, you wanna be able to suck from the tilt itself on the pump. You wanna make sure you have your handle open as well as into the full position as well. And when you go to agitation, again, you wanna make sure that you're agitating through here. So you wanna cut this handle off to the actual product side. So now that you've got some agitation going, your other two settings would still stay the same, but this allows you to actually treat through and agitate that product. And for treating, again, you want your bottom, because this is where your suction is coming from. You want your product handle closed because you don't want to be putting back into that. And then you would put this into the treating position as well as the pump side of things being put into the treating position. So a couple different variations to make sure when you're doing the G3 in order to have proper application. So this type of system is dependent on pressure. So you can adjust your pressure control as well. It's based on electric motors, so you do have an on and off type switch. So the black allows here to go up to calibration charge to know what pressure you need to match up with your grain flow in order to get that consistent seed treatment and grain for primary application. So when we're operating the transfer auger, again, you want to have this hopper full so you've got a consistent source up, but you can adjust the flow by the gate here as well. And again, you'll have a consistent auger speed because it's a, it's, a, it's a single engine that drives the actual belt on the auger. So really how you determine the flow rate is with the slide gate here, and that's going over the auger, which allows how much into that auger or not allowing into the auger. So this may look like a complete job is done here with the grain for the naked eye, but what you'll see a lot of the time is that because you have that curtain of grain going over, seeds will spill there, you'll get some. This is not the actual mixing that you need to do. That's why you need that auger, uh, because there's a lot of seed treatment that on the seed that's not mixed uniformly. So again, you're getting your primary application through here, and that secondary application here is just as important to really bring that product and put it uniformly over and distribute through the seed. And at the end of the day, this is the finished job you're, you're striving to. So again, uh, kind of just wanted to give a, an example of one type of machinery out there to walk through to show the principles on how primary and secondary application work in the seed treatment world. We're just gonna go through uh, a bit of an example too on 
um, a little bit of determining different types of scenarios that you may walk into, whether you're a producer recruiting seed or your actual commercial feeder. And for all intents and purposes, I'm just using the G3 for this. So again, the principles of the G3 are no different than any type of machine learning in the seed creating market marketplace as well. You have the transfer order that regulates your seed flow. You have the application unit, the G3 silver cone, which applies the seed treatment via the pressurized nozzle. And then you've got a control box, which allows you to determine and tweak the treatment flow rate. And your third, fourth objective or the secondary application is really the mixing auger, which finishes mixing seed. And depending on the type of auger, uh, you can run this to three quarters to you know, half the capacity that it can do. So when we look at regulating seed flow, uh, our target flow for wheat usually in this operation is 20 bushels a minute. And with barley for the G3 is about 24. So we want to build that pressure against the nozzle in the G3 to maintain consistent C treatment flow rates. And so with this, outside temperature and during the day uh, is going to affect all equipment. So especially if you're doing a lot of uh, spring treating, where in the mornings you may start off where it's cooler outside, as the day progresses and gets warm, that's going to change your actual seed treatment application throughout the day. So it's just a good reminder here when you start to warm up, maybe do a quick calibration, so you have to do uh, some things differently. If you're running some of the uh, older technology type machines, uh, the newer technology is usually using a touch software which is really adjusting to the flow of the seed itself and the, and, the, and the chemical as well. So if you're using some of these older technology, it's just a, it's a, it's another reminder to just be wary of the weather. Because as it grows warmer, you may start to over apply during the day. And if it starts to cool off again, you may start to under apply. So when we look at the G3, we really want to calculate our seed flow. So we determine that in kilograms per minute, and we want to determine the seed treatment rate, which is going to be in milliliters per 100 kg. We want to calculate the seed treatment flow requirement to match the seed flow in milliliters per minute. And then what we can do is that there's calibration charts designed from V3 to estimate the required pressure that we want to apply our target C treatment rate for. Again, we really want to maintain the paperwork side of this. It's just easy to have a bat seat. So, you know, your C treated in kgs and your C treatment used in liters. Afterwards, this can determine your loading rate. And it's really quite an easy way to determine your loading rate. There are chemical means to allow us to determine this. But the simplistic method, method really to know how good a job you're doing as a treater is to kind of maintain this. So, for example, if we have, you know, 544 kgs per minute of wheat or 20 bushels per minute, and we've got an application rate of the product 325 mils per 100 kg, we can look at this now on the chart. Okay, what PSI do, do I need to be from the X axis or the horizontal axis? And then our bushels per minute on the Y axis or your vertical axis. And we know that we're doing 20 bushels per minute. So we end up uh, here with our one. If we come up off the X axis, because we want to, we want to, we can go down our X axis now. And look at this and say we, we kind of need to be this would be you know 27 give or take uh in this if you're that 20 
26 to 27, I think we're probably going to be okay when it comes to finding out what pressure we need. So when we determine what we're doing per minute is taking the amount of product, what we're doing per minute, dividing, timesing that by the amount of product we're going to use and taking that from the overall uh, volume amount that we've had. And again, when we do the math, it works out to be, you know, you're, looking, you're going to be using about 1.7 liters per minute of product. And then if you look at the G3 for wheat, the 20 bushels, you know, that's the, kind of what I said, it, it, you're around that 27 PSI to kind of achieve that. So we then want to record the amount of seed treatment and the amount of seed uh, for later use to actually go ahead and calculate, <coughs> excuse me, the loading rate. So for example, one, if we have 325 mils uh, per 100 kg of seed and we want to treat 3000 kg, how much product is needed? Well, we first take that, you know, in liters, <clears throat> times that by the amount we want, divide that by overall kgs, and that gives us, we know that we're going to need 9.75 liters of product. So when we look at something and an example like this is that, okay, we've treated 4,000 kg of seed. We use 12 liters of product. We know that we were putting that on at 325 mils per 100 kg of seed. What is our loading rate? So this is one that I would say uh, is, is just a reference check if you want to know how good a job you're doing from an application standpoint. So we take that 12 liters, take it over, you know, what we're using per 100 kg of seed dividing that by the total amount, and that's going to give you the amount of liters, and divide that by our target amount. So what this is saying here is that our actual amount that we put onto the seed was 0.3 of a liter. We know that from looking at the label of the product, our target rate is 0.325. We can times that we take and divide these to get the average in a percentage, you're at 92%. And a good rule of thumb, I feel, in, in the seed treatment side of things is if you're above that 90%, you're doing a really, really good job. Uh, some of the more sophisticated machines now, they're continually at 98 to 100. It's, it's really, um, it's really a good way of just determining how good a job you're doing as, as a treater. And it's just really going by keeping and maintaining a good record of, you know, the amount of seed you're treated and how much product you use. So if we start to look kind of at the balance sheet here, again, um, we have a target rate, but you can either call it a, 0.325 liters per 100 kg or 325 mils. It's up to your discretion to how you like the language you use. And then if we know that we've had 3,500 kg of treated seed, we use 10.8 liters of the product. We take that total product used, divide by that what you have in the seed volume, and that gives you your total volume used. Again, you cross-reference that now, divide that by your target rate, times in by 100 to give you that percentage, and that gives you kind of that 95% uh, loading rate. So, uh, you know, good job. That's, that's, that to me is, is really, you're really doing a good job if you're continuously above that 90% uh, getting on the seed treatment side of things. There's a lot of different variables 
when it comes to treating outside in a, in a, in a non-brick and mortar type scenario. Uh, you do have a lot of different weather elements, uh, environmental conditions as well. And I strongly urge uh, one of the easiest simplistic ways to make sure seed treating is easy each morning is keep all your product in a, in a heated shop uh, after, after the evening, if you're done treating for the evening, waiting for the next morning, uh, you know, take the time to keep that warm because having that warm product makes such a huge difference in the application side of things. So, some of the on site processes uh, really know your flows, and it comes back to knowing your equipment as well. Whether it's new equipment that you're getting, take the time to go through it, run the water, get a feel for the uh, type of things you need to do with it. Really implement different implement treating procedures um, to get get you started. Uh, I really firmly believe just having that nice record keeping is going to pay dividends in the long run. It, it may be a kind of a, a pain in the butt to get a sample of treated seed, uh, but I would strongly recommend to start getting in that habit of getting that treated sample, having the bare sample as well. Yes, it takes up space. Yes, there's another action to do when you do it, um, but in the case that there are any type of issues with growers uh, and treated seed, this is a good, nice, reliable way to say, nope, the, the, the seed treatment was applied right. This is our sample. Um, and really, it's, it's one of these things I, I strongly encourage if you're not doing it is, is to start getting to the habit of that. Provide those seed tags to each uh, producer. That that is kind of a you have to do that. It's not you shouldn't. It's a have to. So whenever if you're if you are a commercial treater, you should be sending that grower out with that seed tag. And the easy way to do it is just to staple it onto his invoice. This might not be as easy as said because we're moving into a world where a lot of this is electronic. So maybe you can find a way just to attach that C tag electronically with that invoice for that grower that it goes to his email so he or she can take that off the phone. I kind of touched base on the, the untreated samples as well. At the end of the day, uh, I'm a firm believer in maintaining and if you keep if you keep care of your equipment, it's going to take care of you. So again, you know, it doesn't have to be the end of the season to flush that system out. If you got some downtime, you know, it's it's always good practice maybe to just have a quick rinse out um, in different scenarios too, where you're maybe switching varieties. You are cleaning that any, anyways. Uh, but if you're in that situation, maybe take time to flush some water through there uh, as well. But you know, uh, the seed care, the seed, the seed treatment is is a is a really become one of those those types that are very important to the overall producers um, getting the seed coming out of the ground. So you guys provide valuable, you, you provide a very valuable asset as well as that. And have fun. I mean, uh, it, it's also is, uh, it's, a, it's a neat, it's kind of a neat space to be in with the seed treatment, whether it's an equipment side of things, the new technologies that keep coming from products, uh, the, the neat things that are coming out for different types of treaters as well. It's it's a it's a really neat space to be in. So this, this is my final few slides, and it's, it's this is the kind of the review process of our basic principle and functions that we've covered here. Is that metering seeds is one of the prior, primary pillar of application. Really maintaining that consistent seed flow. It's going to ensure that you have success when it comes to treating. And as well, this just goes for growers too, if you're treating on farm. Um, but primarily uh, on the commercial level here, it's 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 one of the pillars that are going to make you successful. That liquid system, depending on what type of you know system you're running in your operation, it needs to be accurate. It needs to be adjustable. You know, if you we start to look at primary application. The more advanced technology has moved into atomizing heads. And I think that's just a basic of progression. 
uh, we've seen different types of machines progress in a different way, and that that seems to be progressing. And so, you know, we we don't have to go too far back to you know we had drip just a bag with seed treatment that you dripped into an auger into the back of the truck, and now we've advanced enough where we've got metering systems where you're using software. You're t you know, when I use this. You're touching numbers and it's doing it itself. So you know, primary application has come a long, long ways with how it's being delivered uh, into on onto the seed itself. And then the secondary application, and whether that's through the auger or drum, uh, it's, it's just as important as that primary application to ensure successful uniformity of seed distribution and seed treatment onto that seed. And again, it's come a long ways when it, we look at, you know, what the drum feeder can do with different types of crops as well. So I have the utmost faith in all of you that you continue to do a good job. And this is just one big refresher course. Uh, so that kind of wraps things up for me here. I appreciate your time. Um, I, I do have a few moments for questions if, 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 if there's any. And, if not, uh, I'll really turn things back over to uh, Jamie.